Okay, so we've got this question here. About 20% of Americans suffer from some form of allergies. And we're going to study random samples of 1,000 people. We're going to get this, the mean standard deviation. And then we're going to look at what would be usual and what would be unusual for random samples of 1,000 people. Okay, so, and then answer a specific question. The specific question actually is, how unusual would it be for such a sample to show 7%, 7% suffering from, oh no, sorry, so, whoa, how unusual would it be to find a random sample of 1,000 people in which 25% suffered from allergies? So that's what we're going to answer. So anyway, um, the mean, um, so from the central limit theorem, we expect the, the, the mean of the population is 20%. Now we expect the mean of, um, or random uh, of 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 a, of a th random sample of thousand people to be also twenty percent, and I'm just gonna also get the like the actual numbers. We're just gonna do it both ways because I want you guys to actually beat this to death. Like get twenty percent of a thousand, and that zero point two times a thousand, and I hope you can all figure that one out. Zero point two times a thousand. So if you picked uh, randomly a thousand people. Um, I hope you all agree with me that we would expect about 200 of them to have allergies. That make sense? Yeah. We're, we're like the, 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 the mean is almost so easy, it, it, it's confusing. That, that, that's all it is, right? It's just that like if, if the population, 20% of the population had allergies, and if you, you picked 1,000 random people, you'd expect 200 of them to have allergies. We're okay with that, right? Now, now this formula is asking us to plug in um, the P and our P is, is supposed to be plugged in as a percentage like the number 20, right? So it's just asking us to plug in 20 times 100 minus 20 um, all over N. And our N is the sample size. and our, So our N is 1,000, right? N equals 1,000. So over 1,000. So any questions that far? We're okay with setting up the formula, right? Okay with that. Cool. And I'm just going to point plug, uh, write this out as a calculator. One line entry would be parenthesis 20 times parenthesis 100 minus 20, close parenthesis, divide by 1,000, and then close the parenthesis for that square root. So you have to, your calculator will do a little parenthesis for the square root, and then you need to close it at the end. And then I'm going to type it in. So we got... 20, 100, minus 20, over 1,000, and that is 1.26, so we're getting uh, 1.26, or 9, and so on, that's what I'm getting on, that's what the calculator looks like, oh, I think you guys think that shows up okay, yeah, and that rounds to the one decimal place, I think. Let me see. Yes. Yeah. One decimal place. Uh, one point, what? One point? Three. Three. Nice. One point three. Cool. All right. So we got the mean. We got the standard deviation for groups of a thousand people. Now let's try to understand what the heck is going on. So what's going on is we have the central limit theorem tells us that it doesn't really matter um, that the, it tells us that when we take groups when we look at s random samples not like a random sample of one person or one tree or one dog or one one orange or one apple or one peach but when we look at random samples of like big groups of things then you can always use the normal distribution which is so cool central limit theorem is so powerful in other words we don't really care about how things are distributed, um, but if you take once you take random samples of big groups of things, then you can always assume it's a normal curve. So that's great because then we can use our normal curve knowledge to talk about um, to talk about the what we're looking at. So we'll draw a bell curve. And I want you all to beat this to death. I know that there was only one little question at the end, but I want you all to understand it so that you all do really well on the test. Make me proud and get 100%. All right? 
So it's we've got a bell curve and we're going to go up one standard deviation and then we're going to go up another one. Then we're going to go down one standard deviation and then we're going to go down another one. And once again, I just want you all to understand that in, if the, here's the mean here, the mean, the mu, right? And um, for all normal distributions, when you take the mean and add two standard deviations, and then take the mean and subtract two standard deviations, you'll end up with 95%. 95% of observations will be within two standard deviations of the mean. And that's because that's the way the normal distribution works. Isn't that great? And that can tell us a lot about, about things, can't it? And so it doesn't matter what we're studying, it's always going to be like this. And that's so cool. And that's the area under the curve. Like the area under this curve is 95% um, of the observations will be within two standard deviations of the mean. So, and, and, and the wor whole world considers that, that if, if something is within two standard deviations, it's considered normal, okay? This is considered, you know, normal or usual, okay? And if it's, if it's, if it's down here, you know, to the left, that's like unusually low, Now, if it's up here to the right, that's unusually high. Now, it doesn't really matter what it is. It, it, whatever you're looking at, that's how it's going to be set up. Notice I haven't even used the example because all the normals are the darn same thing. If you guys can just get this, then you, you got it. That's where a normal distribution is. The mean's in the middle. It's a nice bell-shaped curve. You go down two standard deviations this way, up two this way. 95% of your observations will be in the middle. That's considered by the world to be usual. Down here is considered unusually low and up here is considered unusually high. Now, do we get that? <laughs> yeah. And we haven't even put the numbers in yet. <laughs> so, let's get our example. So, the, our, our number, we could use 20%. Yeah, let's, let's use the 20% the, the, the and the 1.3%. So by the way, this is this is percent, and this is um, percent. Although in the formula we just put it in as the number twenty, right? So so the mean is twenty percent, right? And the standard deviation is one point three. So if I add one standard deviation, I get to twenty one point three. And if I add another one, I get to twenty two point six. Twenty two point six. Lovely. If I subtract one standard deviation, and standard deviation, by the way, is 1.3, I get to... Yeah, my brain doesn't work when it goes that way. You go, you take, go down 19, and so it's less than that, so it's 18 point... Seven. There you go. Your brain does work, see that? Then subtract one, and you got 17.7, .7, and subtract a, a point 0.3, and you got 17.4, right? Yeah. Your brain works great. So what we have is that tell me now what's tell me now what's usual and what's unusual now. Tell me the story of this. So anything between seventeen point four to twenty two point six is usual. Yep. And anything above twenty two point six. Yep. Unusual. Yep. Or is unusually high. Yep. Anything below 17.4 is unusually low. Yeah, so we or, need someone to teach this class next quarter. You're going to sign up for the job. <laughs> That's it. I don't have your skills. Oh, you, you oh, just I did it. Would. Oh, come on. Like, can you believe I get paid for this? Yeah, I can. No, come on now. That, you just but you, you did it. But did you, That's all there is to it. That's all it is. And so now you can answer any question that's thrown at you. Because now they can, so, so you, so I'll just throw out, let, let's do the one that, okay, we'll do the one that they asked first, I guess. How unusual would it be to find a random sample of a thousand people in which 25% suffered from allergies? And by the way, I'm just going to look at this when we look at random samples of a thousand people. So it's about a thousand 
About 20, so go back to the question guys, just mind over. 20% of Americans suffer from some type of allergies and we're looking at random samples of a thousand, right? So, so the question basically was, you know, let's take 25%. Now, 25% is, is where on the graph? It's, it's all the way out here somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So like 25% is out there. So that's, that's, that's like, and, and the, the bell curve goes way down here, right? And it, so tell me about 25%. It's, it's unusually high. Unusually high. You got it. 25% would be unusually high. And can you think about like a real life example where you would be taking a you would, where you would get a thousand people and you want to know like and, and their allergy rate was 25 percent and you go, wow, that was unusually high. Like when, when would that happen in real life? Any idea? Um, 25 random people that their allergies are. So I like think about schools, for example. Peanut butter. Yeah, you like or like schools. So let's say, let's say there was a you were looking at you you were looking at the allergy rate in the school, and there was I'm a thousand. School. So let's just go with that. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. Like like I'm just trying to tease out, but like a thousand people in a school, right? Yeah. Twenty five percent of them have allergies. That's unusually high, and then you go okay. Because it's unusually high, maybe there's something about that population. Yeah. Maybe you guys have a certain exposure to some Mold. type of, you know. Go on, you yeah. might you know this as well as I do. Yeah. So, and and anyone watching from home, you guys are all citizens in this in this country, and this is citizenship math. And so that's like, this is the discussion we're having. It's like well. I mean, you guys probably know, like, you guys know as well as I do. It might be something like, well, that, you know, that, that's unusually high, therefore, that, that shows that there must be something going on with the environment the kids are in, right? right. Or it, it, it might be whatever. Well, I don't know what it would It could be air pollution. It could be water pollution. It could be whatever causes kids' allergy rates to, to be high. I'm not a doctor. I don't really know. <laughs> You know, or if you took okay, so tell me about. Let's say you went, you, you went to a to a, a, a town. So let's say it was a town, and the town had a thousand people in it, and it turned out that only fifteen percent of them had allergies. What can you say about that town then? But it was unusually low. Right, because fifteen is down here. So fifteen percent is unusually low. So so therefore. What can you conclude about the, the town? That they are very clean. Right. There must be something about, there might be, there might be, some, I mean, it, it could be a fluke. It could be a coincidence, right? But there might be something going on in that town that means that these people have less allergies, right? Right. Uh, for whatever reason. And, and for whatever causes allergies, maybe, maybe they... Homopathic. What's that? Homopathic. Um, yeah, or maybe they no no nobody has any carpets in their house or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, well, then there's dust on the floor. I mean, because hardwood floors cause a lot of dust. I don't know what it is. Yeah, and the, the, yeah, and so there's all that all that stuff, and so that the interesting thing, though, is that if you didn't do the normal curve, and you just saw this, and then. And then I said, hey, in my town, only 15% of people have allergies. And the average is 20. And I said, well, ours is only 15. And then you would say, so, right? <laughs> but 15 is actually a big deal, because look. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so the, the point about the normal, cur normal curve, it tells us what is a big deal and what's not. Or, or you know... Um, you know, okay, 20% of people suffer from allergies, and then I said, hey, but in our school, it's like 25%. And then somebody might be like, well, so it's only 5% more, right? 25% is only 5% more than 20%. But when you look at the normal curve, you look how it's supposed to work, you go, wow, that's way high, you know? Even though it's only 5% more, 
it's very unusual for a group of a thousand people to have 25 percent um, allergies and by the way just to be it to death because I can't help myself 25 percent of a thousand is 250 people right so we look at groups of a thousand we're expecting about 200 um, give or take um, and 1.3 by the way was the standard deviation remember that that's sorry sorry everybody this video is getting long but 0 0.013 you know times 1000 is oh it's 13 right Duh. of course and so 213 people 226 people and subtract 13 they get 187 subtract 13 they get 174 so out of out of groups of a thousand people we expect that 200 give or take 26 would have you know uh, that's what we expect would have allergies so anything less than 174 is a big deal people wise anything more than 226 out of a thousand is unusual okay with that yeah i think we beat that one to death right yeah